We'll be talking about teeth. What did you know? We'll be talking about dental care and I'll tell you all about it. How to keep your teeth clean and healthy. Yeah. What do you think? Does it make sense? Okay. So, today I'd like to tell you about what to do about your dog's teeth and how to keep them healthy and good and shiny for many years to come. Now we have two puppies here. One of them is Kuba here. And he's a, he's a fresh immigrant from the European Union, from the Czech Republic. And he's a dog of my friends. And Pax actually is also an immigrant from the Czech Republic <laughs> because he's been, he was born there. And um, Kuba is eight years, so he has some dental challenges. And Pax is one year and he is, or he shouldn't have any dental challenges because his dad is a vet. Anyway, I just wanted to let you know that we'll go through a little bit of a sequence of uh, how to start looking after your dog's teeth, especially if your dog's teeth are a problem. And if your dog is young, like Pax, uh, how to keep them healthy and, and um, shiny. Anyway, let's get going. The main reason why I'm here and why I plan to teach you about dental care is that many of you are worried about your dog's bad breath. Your dog can give you kisses because it's uh, less than nicely smelling. <laughs> and uh, also because you possibly got in a lecture from your veterinarian that your dog's teeth are bad and that you should put your dog under anesthesia every year. The first step I'd like to go through is what to do in certain life stages. If you have a young puppy, the first thing that you do is to start handling. Could we go? Do you want to go? Oh, <laughs> he doesn't want to have anything to do with teeth. Anyway, if you have a young puppy, you start handling his mouth very early. What you can do, you can start massaging the gums or maybe put something really yummy on your dog's gums and he or she will really like it. You can see that Pax is really used to having his mouth handled. Now if you have a dog that is older and he or she is not used to handling teeth, you will need to start. Again, start with something yummy, massaging the gums or just lifting the lips, putting something really yummy under the lips, in the mouth, and then your dog will gradually get comfortable with it. Now most people when they see that there's tartar or buildup or plug, which is um, basically buildup of bacteria and minerals on the teeth, they try to brush it off. And you heard me saying minerals. Mineralization of the tartar is very, very common. It's hard, it's really hard to scrape, it's almost like a little rock stuck to your dog's teeth. You will not be able to brush it off, no matter how hard you try. And if your dog has tartar on his or her teeth, you will likely spread bacteria in the bloodstream and in the body. So the first thing that you need to do is to evaluate your dog's teeth. Is there any tartar on it? Is there any plug on it or not? If you see no tartar, no plug, then you can start brushing. And I usually recommend using coconut oil and toothbrush because it is antibacterial, dogs like it, and it doesn't have any additives and toxins in it. Now, the next question to answer is how often we should brush. And I would say if you can, do it every day because our teeth are not any different than dog's teeth um, on the level of their anatomy and, and how often they need to be cared for. That's why I would recommend once a day. There's another perspective or element. If you get used to a routine, let's say before you have your morning coffee, you brush your dog's teeth or before you um, go to bed, brush your dog's teeth. Before you brush your teeth, brush your, brush your dog's teeth. So that's something that you can uh, do really easily. The bigger challenge is if your dog has plug or tartar on his teeth. And little Kuba, and he's now looking at me from the other side of the room, he um, has a lot of tartar. Even though his parents are really caring and they follow the instructions, um, it doesn't take much to build up tartar. So what we're gonna do with him, we have to take him through a particular process or procedure 
to make sure that it will be able to start looking after its teeth at home. There are several stages of dental tartar buildup. The mild one is just a little layer on the surface of some teeth. The next level is when there is quite a bit of tartar on all the teeth. And the third level is when there are abscesses, when there's infection, when there are pockets, and your dog is most likely in discomfort. If you see that your dog's mouth really smell bad, smells badly, or if it hypersalivates, or if you see that, uh, that he smacks his lips or plays with his tongue, most likely your dog is in, in discomfort. So remember that the first phase or step is to go and see a veterinarian. When you go and see your veterinarian, be ready that your vet will tell you that your dog most likely will need to go under anesthesia. And that is the case in most cases, unless the tartar buildup is very mild. If the buildup is mild, you can actually ask him or her to do dental hand scaling. And I usually do that on packs, or I used to do that with Sky, where I used to take a scaling tool and I would just scrape his teeth uh, the same way your dentist does. However, in most instances, you will need to have your dog under sedation or under anesthesia. If your dog is seven or eight years and older, definitely make sure that blood work is done before the dental scaling, because there can be kidney disease, there can be liver disease, there can be other problems that can influence the outcome of the anesthesia. During the anesthesia, our vet or the technician will actually scale the teeth, examine them, make sure that there are no problems, and then we'll recover your dog. Now, many people are worried about anesthesia. My belief is that it's much safer to do anesthesia dental cleaning than leaving your dog's teeth infected. The biggest reason is that bacteria in the mouth can actually spread in the body in the system and most commonly affects the kidneys, and also the heart. Now the bacteria will settle in the kidney tissue and will obviously damage it. And then the immune system goes and registers inflammation and will start removing the kidney cells, which leads to further progression of kidney disease. So it's super important for you to get your dog's teeth done because kidneys are under a threat. The second uh, reason why I want you to look after your dog's teeth is your dog's heart. Because bacteria can spread in the heart and settle around the valves. And this is one of the main reasons why small dogs have heart disease. Now, I'm not saying that if your dog has infected teeth that there is a heart disease. However, it is super important to look after your dog's teeth and make sure there's no bacteria to protect your dog's heart. Now, if your dog coughs or if there is, uh, if there is something unusual going on, if you see that he, sh he or she is short of breath, you don't need to panic. All you need to do is to get an examination done and potentially an ultrasound, which will give you an idea if there are any abnormalities in your dog's heart. And if there is, again, I've seen many dogs living many, many years and, and having no problems at all but the number one thing is to keep his or her teeth very healthy and clean. After the anesthesia, many veterinarians prescribe NSAIDs or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like Metacam and others. And these drugs have a tendency to cause kidney disease. I've seen that in older dogs, especially if they have healthy kidneys and then they go under anesthesia, they are stressed, um, their body is uh, a little more sensitive and they end up with kidney disease. So it's super important, <laughs> Pax is leaving too. It is super important um, to uh, make sure that you talk to your veterinarian and ask them to use other pain control than NSAIDs. Now I have an article about it on my website and here is the link. So if your dog is a puppy or your dog has just gone through dental cleaning, this, the most important part is to keep his or her teeth really clean. I usually start with toothbrushing very early. You can get either a toothbrush, which is um, just a regular toothbrush, human toothbrush, or you can get an ultrasonic toothbrush and get your dog used to the vibration. That's the best way to prevent tartar, especially in young little dogs. Mm. <laughs> the problem is that many little dogs like to wiggle out. Many little dogs don't like their mouth being handled. So you have to be very patient, go very slow, and make sure that initially you put something very yummy 
on the toothbrush. So your dog loves it and looks forward to it. The next step or the next um, tool that you have in your arsenal of um, dental care are bones. There's still many of my colleagues who say that uh, raw bones are dangerous for dogs. That myth came up with feeding cooked bones, which are undigestible. I've been recommending raw bones for the last 15 or 20 years, and they really are great in preventing dental tartar buildup. This is the nature's dental hygiene. In nature, dogs really don't have any scalers or any anesthesia. They just chew on bones, and that's how they scale the teeth. I understand that some of you may worry about splinters from the bones. Uh, you don't need to worry because dogs have very strong stomach acids. And as long as your bone, dog's bones are raw, they will digest them. So don't worry about that. Actually, the sharpness of those bits and pieces is excellent for dental scaling. Now, that will look after the side teeth, the premolars and molars. The canine teeth, which are the pointy teeth, the big teeth in the front of your dog's mouth, may build up a little bit of tartar at the top. And I just simply take either a scaler, and you can find some videos online and see how to handle it, or just your nail and just, you know, every few days, just kind of check your dog's uh, front teeth, the canines, and scrape them from gum, from the gum down. And what you need to do is to just kind of find the end of the gum. So take your finger and go up to the gum and then scrape down. Now, I know that this is not very sophisticated and advanced medical procedure, but I'll tell you honestly, if you combine brushing, if you combine bones, raw bones, and I have an article here, here's a link, and also scraping the canine teeth, either with a scale or your, your fingernail, it will really make a huge difference. I am not against anesthesia for teeth, and I think sometimes it is important. We have to decide for the, for, for the, the least of the two evil. Uh, if your dog has infected teeth, it's super important to go ahead, do anesthesia, dental cleaning, and then look after your dog's teeth in other ways and more gentle ways. Now, uh, let's say that you've been brushing. Let's say that you've been giving bones. Let's say that you've been doing the little bit of scraping of the canines and you still see that your dog is building up a little bit of tartar. That's the time when you can ask a dental canine dental hygienist to do actually dental hand scaling. It doesn't usually require anesthesia. If it's done early on, then there is no infection. It is actually a relatively simple procedure, especially if you train your dog to be still at least for some time. I know that it's not easy, but what is the alternative? Yearly anesthesia, a lot of expense, and also anesthesia is safe, but at the same time, you shouldn't be doing it too frequently. So I hope that this will help you. And if you have any questions, uh, you can comment below or email us at peterdubias.com. Thank you so much. And I hope you subscribe to our videos and also our newsletter. Take care, bye-bye.